Hi everyone, it's Miss Davis here. I'm going to be showing you the technique of cross hatching. So what we're looking for is a drawing using the cross hatching technique. Now, in order to do this, you need just a normal biro pen. So it doesn't matter if you use blue or black. Okay, if you've got black, that would be better, but blue is absolutely fine. It does exactly the same technique. So what we're going to be thinking about first of all is using the cross hatching technique to have a look at light, medium and dark tones. So exactly like you would do with a pencil, where you'd blend through, changing the pressure that you're applying through those dark tones, the mid tones, all the way to those light tones. And we've done this many times in class. Exactly the same technique using a pen. All you do is apply the pressure so much harder for those dark tones and then you just gradually get lighter on that pressure that you're pressing to get to those really really light tones. We're looking for a full gradual blend from dark all the way through those mid tones to those light tones. Now there's many different ways that you can use cross hatching. All cross hatching means is simply where you're using your pen to draw lines and you cross over them the other way. It doesn't need to be perfectly right hand crosses, they can be at an angle which often makes it look more natural and can make your drawing more successful. There's different ways of applying the dark and light tones to your cross section technique. So for example if you were to do the darker cross section, you press quite hard on your pen you're doing the lines very close together and the cross lines that you do are also close together. So this then creates that dark tone that we're looking for. On the other side then, in order to look for a light tone, there's different ways that you can do that. So you could press really, really lightly on your pen and cross those lines over, again, pressing really lightly. So you can see the difference between those two different tones there. You could also space the gaps out with your crosses so they're much wider. This will then give you a really light tone. So have a little play around before you get started, thinking about the different tones that you could create. Now, I've chosen this jug image for us to have a look at. I think it's quite a nice, simple image, but it's got lots of different tones within it. So you can really explore using a cross action technique to create the tones. I've already sketched out my piece and I've done it in pencil just to make sure I was happy with my drawing of the jug. It's not identical and that doesn't matter. It's more about the technique that we're looking for. So to start off with, I'm gonna have a look at my image and I can see in this bottom corner here is much darker. So I'm gonna think about using these darker cross hatching tones to build up that bottom section of the image. What I'm gonna do using my pen is start to build up those darker tones. You can see I'm working quite quickly with my pen and building up those darker tones. One of my top tips with cross hatching is much better to do separate lines like this rather than keeping your pen on your page and do more of a zigzag sort of line. So focus on those separate lines, taking your pen off every time you go back for a line. That will make it more of a successful cross hatching piece. So building up these dark areas and I'm sort of following the curve that I can see on the jug. So really thinking about those dark tones and I'm going back over those lines. Now, before I build up this section anymore, I want to make sure I'm happy with where the light areas are. So on the image, I can see there are some light sections in this corner here. So what I'm gonna do is just sketch in very lightly the sections that I would like to leave light. So I can see there are two sections down here. I can also see there's a section here. Now it's really important that you press lightly with this because you don't want the shape to stand out too much. It's more about leaving those lighter sections, okay? So I'm happy now on this side that I've chosen where those light sections are. So I can carry on with my cross hatching. So I've done the lines building up through 
all going in one direction. And I'm now going to bring them across with my pen going in the other direction. This is where that cross hatching technique will start to build up. I'm going to build that all the way up to that section there. I then want to go through some of those mid tones. So I'm going to press slightly lighter on my pen and I'm going to bring that cross hatching coming round. And you can see the lines are getting further apart as I go here. I'm then going to cross hatch the opposite way. But I'm going to get less and less as I come. So I hardly have any lines crossing over here. I'm then just going to sketch in that baseline so I can see the detail on the shape. And I can see there is a slight darkness under there. And I'm going to sketch that round and through. Coming up then towards these light sections that I've left, I'm just going to focus on really light lines and I'm not going to cross this time, I'm just keeping it going in one direction. This will give me a much lighter tone and it'll contrast against the darker tones that I can see. So I'm going to bring this all the way up. I'm going to finish off that cross hatching up to that section. And I'm just going to blend it in slightly so I don't have a strip of it. I'm going to bring that cross hatching then using just the lines. And I'm going to bring that round to the top as well. When I look at the top section of the jug here, I can see that there are some darker tones. So I'm going to bring this sort of technique that I've done on this bottom section down here and I'm going to bring that up and through. So that's going to come exactly the same round here. So I'm going to press much harder with my pen on this top section here, making sure to leave those areas that I've decided need to be light in that top section. And I'm going to cross over with my pen using that cross hatching technique to make this section much darker. Remember, the closer together the lines are, the darker the section will be. So if you want a really dark section, make the lines much, much closer together. And don't forget, you can go back over the lines if you feel they need to be darker as well. So I'm just gonna go in between the gaps around those spaces that I've decided to leave light. I'm gonna cross hatch them back across that top section there. And I'm just going to sketch in that top line to give it a nice edge to the top of the jug. Following on then, I'm going to start thinking about this middle section of my piece. I can see there's quite a lot of light areas within the middle. So I'm going to do some quite wide lines for this section. And this will create a strong contrast then against that darker section at the bottom. I can see there is a strip here which I want to leave completely light. I'm not gonna draw it in this time. I'm just gonna be careful to make sure I do leave a strip in that section. So I'm gonna bring that across. Coming round then, I can see there is some slight darker areas just around next to where the handle meets. So I'm gonna add those in. Coming round from the bottom section there. Remember, it's all about building up the tone with your piece, okay? So taking it step by step and just working on one section at a time. And you can then always go back to different sections if you feel that they could be darker in certain areas. So I do want to build up this section here to create it slightly darker. And that will then create some balance within my image. Coming around then, I'm just going to have some lines coming across and I am going to then cross over this section here as I feel it could be slightly darker. Thinking about the handle then, I don't want it all to be one tone in order to make it look 3D. So I'm just going to sketch out the line that I have drawn in pencil first of all. In order to make it look 3D, I'm going to make sure that I've got a clear side so you can see the shadow and the underneath of the piece. And all I'm gonna do, just going in one direction this time as it's quite a small area, I'm just gonna build up the lines onto my piece 
to create that darker section there. Then I'm going to start thinking about the shadowed areas. Okay, so I can see there's a little dark area at the top and this area I would like to be a bit darker. So I'm going to go back over there to create that shadowed area. So I'm quite happy that that is now looking a little bit more three dimensional. So we want this jug using those light and those dark areas to look as if it's an object. Exactly the same with this top section here. However, this time I want this to be really, really light. So all I'm gonna do is really light lines. And I'm gonna build that up slowly. Exactly the same then with the top section of the lid. I've got the shape there and I can see it is much darker on that center line and there's a slight shadow come in from that side. So once I've got the basics of the cross hatching on, it's really important that you take a step back and then come back to your image. This is where you will see if there's anywhere that you maybe think you need to add in some darker areas. So I can see that I've maybe missed a dark section coming around here. So all I'm gonna do is go back and I'm gonna add that in. Working then along this bottom section, I'm gonna make sure that I'm happy that that blends in nicely from that very dark tone. Think about that light to dark blend and I'm gonna blend that in. Thinking about the edge of this area here, because I want this to be completely light, I'm gonna make sure that I have gone right to the edge of that area. So that's really important to think about as well. So I think I'm happy now with the shape of the jug. What you could do then is start to think about making the jug sit in on a table, for example. So sketching in the lines, thinking then about the shadow. So the shadow in this jug is going over to the left hand side and I'm gonna work quite freely with this. So I don't want it to be as precise as the jug, but I do want it to be quite dark because it is a shadow. So I'm gonna build this up with some quite strong lines working quite freely. Then I can cross hatch across. This will help then to make that shadowed area really quite dark and build it up. You could also work into the background and into the table if you feel more confident using the cross hatching method. There are three things that I'd like you to remember. I'd like you to make sure that you've got dark, medium and light tones within your cross hatching piece. You need to include some cross hatching element within your piece as well as those little lines if you want to build up the lighter areas. And I'd like you to think about having a variation of texture. All that means is that you've got different angles and different ways of using that cross hatching method to build up your drawing. Really looking forward to seeing your drawings and I hope you're all well.